Potomac River in Virginia. So beautiful. Oh, hi. Cody Rawl here, coming to you from the Potomac River in Virginia. Today I wanted to talk about a couple of uh, different things, mainly NMDA receptors in the brain. What are NMDA receptors? Well, NMDA re receptors are really interesting because they have to do a lot to do with neuroplasticity in memory and learning. Basically, when NMDA receptors get activated, they encourage the neurons to grow dendrites, make little connections, and consolidate information in the brain. Now, NMDA receptors have a colorful history when it comes to the pharmaceutical industry in the last half century or so. Most of it has been blocking the NMDA receptor activity. Who would have thought that blocking the NMDA receptor activity would lead to symptoms like schizophrenia? One of these compounds that was developed in the 1950s was called phenylcyclidine. It had this antagonistic activity on the NMDA receptors. It was good for an anesthetic, which is why it was developed. Basically, in an anesthetic, you want uh, amnesia, or not remembering the event, and also anesthesia, which is redu reduction of the pain. It had both of these qualities. The only problem was it also had this dissociative effect. Dissociation is when the reality around you becomes unreal. You don't feel like you're connected, and people were having auditory and visual hallucinations on this stuff too, which is why the FDA discontinued its use in 1965. Funny enough, PCP found its way to the streets and is now used as a recreational drug. Its actual street name is Angel's Dust. You might have heard of it before. People smoke it. People smoke this PCP or Angel's Dust for recreation. And they have pop culture references to this stuff too. If you remember in the 2000s with Dave Chappelle when he had his show, he had multiple references to smoking PCP. There was an episode where Wayne Brady from Whose Line Is It Anyways was on the show. And the joke was Wayne Brady was actually a really hardcore individual because on um, Whose Line Is It Anyways, it's improv. You know, he seems like a super nice guy. But when he was on the Dave Chappelle show, he was di dri driving Dave around town, uh, getting into all sorts of trouble and actually made him smoke PCP. Um, Dave sh soon thereafter had uh, auditory and visual hallucinations. There's also another drug that's still around today called ketamine that had the same antag antagonistic qualities on NMDA receptors. Ketamine is still used today for its anesthesia qualities. I actually had a patient earlier this year that had CRIP, which is a really bad pain syndrome to the point where even touch, touching the skin elicits just intense, intense pain. And this guy was in so much pain that we had to give him ketamine. And by the end of the night, he was seeing white unicorns and his sister-in-law in the room who was not there. So really interesting stuff blocking the NMDA receptors leading to all these symptoms. What actually got me interested in talking about NMDA receptors today is there was an article in the American Journal of Psychiatry this month that talked about a compound that activated NMDA receptors. It's called d and it's been developed through animal models. Now they know it acts on the NMDA receptors and enhances synaptic plasticity. And what they used it for was in PTSD victims. They had Iraq and Afghanistan veterans that have PTSD and used it to help them. Now PTSD is developed when you're in high stress situations, warfare for example, and certain stimuli get linked basically to the fight or flight response. Uh, explosions, the smell of burning rubber, uh, etc. while you're over there get linked to the intense danger that you're in. So much so that when these people come back to the states, even uh, the crack of a firecracker or the smell of burning rubber will bring them back to that, resulting in flashbacks, nightmares, and a heightened fight or fight response that's really debilitating to these individuals. Part of the therapy is called exposure therapy. So they expose them to these stimuli in a more controlled environment, allowing the body to realize, hey, we're not in danger anymore. These stimuli are not going to hurt us. So let's decrease the fight or flight response. What they did was a randomized control trial. So they had an experimental group where they actually gave d and they have a control group that didn't get d They put them through the exposure therapy in order to help them deregulate the response to these stimuli. 
what was really interesting is that the people in the experimental group had decreased levels of cortisol in their blood a couple of months after and a decreased startle response. Now the startle response was elicited and objectified through tracking eye movements. They have this software and this great technology that tracks the eye movements. So what they found in the experimental group is they had a decreased startle response and decreased cortisol a couple of months after um, compared to the control group as both went through the exposure training. So I thought that was incredible that we now have a compound that acts on NMDA receptors that helps accelerate at least one type of learning. Whether this will pan out in other types of learning remains to be seen. There's some preliminary data that hasn't been too promising, but hey, we can always develop new compounds that have other effects on the NMDA receptors encouraging synaptic plasticity. Wouldn't that be great if we could speed up human learning and memory? And in the course of it all, they help some PTSD victims out. All right, that's all I had for you guys this week. Thanks for tuning in to Tech for Psych. See you next time. Thanks.